I want to talk to you today about the Gettier problem. It's been dominating epistemological discussions for the last several decades. What is the Gettier problem and why is it important? Suppose we want to understand what knowledge is. We could begin with Plato's Theaetetus, the first serious attempt to try to uncover the nature of knowledge. Plato starts with the definition that knowledge is perception. But he says, well, that's obviously not right. I mean, actually, it's a complicated argument, but the point is in a way simple. Things can seem to you to be a certain way without really being that way. You can be wrong. What if we try to rule out perceptions that are wrong and say it's a matter of true belief? Well, you could be right for the wrong sort of reason. You may believe this thing to be true. His example is a judge who believes that the defendant is guilty, but not on the basis of evidence because of some kind of prejudice. In that case, the judge surely doesn't know that the defendant is guilty, even though he has a belief and it's true. So Plato says, what about this idea? It's true belief with an account. That is to say, justified true belief. Well, that seems like a plausible account of knowledge. As we've seen, Plato himself ends up raising objections against it, saying it's a problematic sort of thing that ends up pushing us out of the realm of knowledge, or at least out of the realm of justified knowledge. Surely, if that general account is right, there must be some things that are actually known directly, basic items of knowledge. They either aren't justified or in some way justify themselves. But here I want to focus on a different issue. Suppose we think about knowledge as justified true belief. We can ask whether justification is really necessary, as Plato thinks it is. But we could also ask whether it's enough, whether it's sufficient. That is to say, is every case of justified true belief knowledge? Well, Gettier's example is meant to show that it's not. That you can have justification for a belief, it can turn out that belief is true, nevertheless, it doesn't count as knowledge. Gettier's original paper gives us two examples. In one case, you see someone's car keys. You see a key to a Ford. You infer that they own a Ford. Well, you're right about that. You form a belief that that person drives a Ford. It's true. On the other hand, that key was not the key to that person's Ford. They had borrowed someone else's car that day that happened to be a Ford. Do you know that they drive a Ford? Well, we might say, you have a justification. You saw the key in their hand, that it was a key to a Ford. And you turn out to be right, they do own a Ford. But nevertheless, you might think, you, you got lucky in some way. They happened to borrow a car that was the same make of car as the one they actually drive. Here's the second example. You're in competition with someone else for a job. And you see that person go over to the vending machine as you're waiting for your interviews, and you see them count out 10 coins. And you infer, hmm, <laughs> I'm not feeling confident about this job at all. I see that person has 10 coins. I think he's going to get the job. And so you infer that the person who is going to get the job has 10 coins in his pocket. Well, he puts them back in his pocket. He doesn't buy the thing from the vending machine. You go back into the room and you wait. You end up being interviewed. Turns out you do well. You get the job. Now, without even realizing it, it turns out in your jacket pocket were 10 coins. So you formed the belief that the person who would get the job had 10 coins in his pocket. You were right, but it's because it turned out to be you. Well, you might think there's something really weird about these cases. In both cases, you got lucky. You had some evidence. You pointed at that evidence as your justification. Your belief was true. You formed that belief. But it doesn't seem as if in either case you know the thing that you ended up believing. Now, why? Well, that kind of luck seems to disqualify things. Some people have said, well, look, this is a really rare kind of case. It comes up very unusually. But when you begin thinking about it that way, you realize, wait, I'm not so sure it's very rare. We can come up with other kinds of examples. In fact, in the history of philosophy, there are a number of examples like this. Bertrand Russell points to someone who looks at the clock and says, it's 2.30. And turns out they're right. But the clock has stopped. It always says 2.30. They just happen to look at the clock that says 2.30 all the time when it was 2.30. They form a correct belief, but on the basis of a stopped clock. We're unlikely to be admitting that they know 
that it's 2.30. Here's an example from the 8th century Indian philosophy, Dhammatara. Imagine you're seeking water on a hot day. You look ahead on the road. You see a mirage. It looks like there's water up there. You form the belief on the basis of the mirage that there's water up ahead. You get up there. It turns out what you saw was a mirage. But there, beside the road, in a way you couldn't see, was some water. So, it turns out you formed a belief. Your belief was true. You had a justification. You saw it up ahead of you. But it turned out that was a mirage that you saw. By luck, it turned out there was water nearby. There's a different kind of example in Sri Harsha, also from India. In this example, you're looking at something that looks like smoke on a distant hill. Actually, what you're seeing is mist from a fog. It's not smoke at all. But it turns out there is a fire on that hill, and you form on the basis of what you think is smoke, but really isn't, that there is fire on the hill. You're right. You have that belief. You have a justification. You see what seems to be smoke over there. But it turns out you're not seeing smoke at all. You're seeing mist. Do you know that there's a fire on the hill? Sri Harsha says, no. But you've got a true belief that's justified. So it looks like you fulfill all three conditions. Here's another example from the medieval philosopher Peter of Mantua. You see Plato running, but you think it's Socrates. So you form the belief that Socrates is running. Well, as it happens at that moment, Socrates is running. But you're not seeing Socrates, you're seeing Plato. So you've got a belief that Socrates is running. That's true, he is running. But you form that on the mistaken belief that you've seen him running when actually you saw someone else running. Again, justified true belief, but something's gone wrong. So how can we characterize what's really happening in all these cases? It looks as if there's a problem with your justification. One way to look at it is, yes, you've gotten lucky. It turns out that it wasn't for the reason that you provided as a justification that that belief is true. But another way of looking at it is that there's a mistake somewhere. You've based your reasoning in that justification on something false, that the person you're seeing is Socrates, for example, or that you're seeing smoke on that hill when it's really mist, or that that's water you're seeing up ahead when in fact you're seeing a mirage, or to go back to Gettier's cases, that you're seeing that person's key when it's not that person's key, it's instead the key that they've borrowed to a borrowed car. In all of those types of cases, there is false information. So here's one way of trying to amend the definition. You could say, yeah, look, I don't mean a justification on the basis of, well, whatever. Yeah, of course you can justify a true belief on the basis of all sorts of false things. No, I mean something that is resting on a true foundation. So we've got a true belief that is justified on the basis of information that is accurate, that is itself true. How about that? A different kind of case is proposed to cover that sort of amended justified true belief analysis of knowledge. Suppose you're in a place where they shoot a lot of Hollywood movies, in fact a lot of farming movies, and most of the barns in this area are fake barns. They're barn fronts so that it will look like a farming community when in fact you're just outside LA. Well, you're standing there and you see a barn in the field, or what seems to you to be a barn anyway, and you form the belief that there's a barn over there. And you're right. This is perhaps the only barn in the area that's a real barn instead of being one of these fake Hollywood fronts. You've got a belief. It's true. You've got a justification. But now that justification rests on something that entirely consists of accurate information. You say, I'm standing right here and I'm looking at a barn. And that's true. However, in the area around there, most of the things that look just like that are not barns. They're fake. So, do you know that that's a barn? Perhaps if we told you, look, um, are you sure you're seeing a real barn? Most of the things in this area are fakes. You might take it back. If it were a fake barn you were looking at, presumably you couldn't tell the difference. You'd still affirm that you were looking at a barn. Does it matter? Even if I amend my analysis of knowledge to require that a justification rest entirely on true beliefs, that it be based on accurate information, it will not rule out those fake barn cases. 
Now, some people have said, well, A, I think maybe you do know in that case. And you could defend that position. Some people think mm, the fact that you got lucky in that way, you just happen to be in front of a real barn, doesn't under undermine your justification, doesn't undermine your claim to knowledge. So that's one possible response. Another response is to say there's something about the kind of luck that's at stake here that's different from the other sort of luck. Here it's not just a matter of having the right kind of, well, information in your justification that happens to be true. It's being in a situation <laughs> that makes that true judgment stably true. That is to say, the kind of thing that isn't just happening to be true, but would be true if things were a little bit different, if you were in a different place, a different position, etc., etc. And so there are different kinds of responses. But we might also say the whole attempt to provide a justified true belief type analysis of knowledge is misguided, and we might have to look elsewhere.